This is Ronnie Odom. I'm with Navigate Housing, and welcome to another Wednesday Wisdom. Today we're going to talk about absent family members, how to treat absent family members. Now, what you're going to have to determine is, is that absent family member temporarily absent or permanently absent? If they're temporarily absent, we count them in the family. But if they're permanently absent, we no longer count them in the family. There is no cutoff or no um, real definition after that provided by HUD, but a best practice is 180 days. Use 180 days if someone is absent um, up to 180 days, then they will be considered temporarily absent. And if they're absent after 180 days, they will be considered permanently absent. Now, everything I'm talking about today is something that would have to go into your ACOP or your administrative plan. You need to make sure that all of this is defined. And so you're going to look at absent students. So you have a client, Ms. Smith, and her daughter is away at college and she wants to keep her daughter in the family. So most of the time we ask the family, what do you want to do? But you also have to apply some sense of logic. So for example, if Ms. Smith lives in Georgia and her child is only 100 miles away, then yes, that makes sense. But if her child is in school in Hawaii and only comes home once every two years, then that might be something for you to reconsider. We're going to also look at absences due to a child being placed into child care. I'm sorry, being placed into foster care. So for example, um, a mother who is on welfare gets hooked on drugs and her kids get taken away. You're going to first of all verify with that facility how long those kids are intended to stay. Is this a temporary situation or is it a permanent situation? and then you would make um, the right decision based on, whether, um, based on your verification. You also need to make decisions about what if the absent person is the head, the spouse, or the co-head. Now we often see this in military families, and of course in military families, um, or in families that work, say, outside the state or in a different city, we see that a lot now. Um, and because of their status as the head, the spouse, or the co-head, they're expected to still contribute to that family and they are still a family member. And we count their income. Um, so then we're gonna look at family members permanently confined for medical reasons. And this one gets a little tricky, not because the rules are so vague, but because we're dealing with people's emotions and you have to be a little bit careful. So, of course, you want to verify again whether or not that person is expected to be temporarily or permanently away. Um, and just be careful how you um, go about it. So, for instance, if it is someone whose medical expenses could be deducted from the family's annual income, if they're permanently away, you would, of course, no longer count their income or their expenses. And if they're temporarily away, you would still count that information. If someone has joint custody of dependents, again, you want to look and see if that person has them 50% of the time. And then you want to make sure that you're not counting those children twice. So in case you have both parents who are in the Section 8 program or who are in, who are in public housing or one in one and one in the other, you want to make sure that you're not counting those kids twice. So you have to come up with policies to address that. And then finally, caretakers for a child. Um, their parent dies and an aunt has to move into the household until a decision is made. So again, you're looking at that situation to see if it's temporary. If it's temporary, you don't count them as a family member, you don't count their income, and you don't transfer the voucher or the lease into their name. But if it's a permanent situation and you want to anchor those children in, in, in their home where they are, you want to make sure that you do um, verify that, count their income, as well as transfer the voucher or the lease. I hope that this has been helpful for you. Please join us again for another Wednesday's Wisdom.
Thank you.